Hello. As my regulars will know, very often when I see some idiocy in the news, I think of a famous story or a novel or a play or sometimes a well-known historical occurrence which seems to be repeating itself because people obviously didn't learn the lesson the first time. But this Greta Thunberg thing reminded me of no less than two folk tales, um, two classic children's stories and an incident from the Hundred Years' War. It's full of richness, this story. To start with the stories, it's appropriate that Thunberg describes herself as a child, even though she's 16. Now, that in itself is strange because she doesn't look 16. Look, this is a photo of Thunberg. Oh no, sorry, it's that side, isn't it? Of Thunberg. And here are two pictures, I'll play them while I'm talking, of American kids in grade 10. And I chose grade 10 deliberately because in the American school system, grade 10 is 15 to 16. Grade 11 is 16 to 17. So I've chosen the lowest possible age for these kids, several of whom will be not 16, but 15. And they all look older than Greta Thunberg. Even though they're at least a year younger than, well, some of them are at least a year younger than her. Now, I know the reasonable response to this will be that the poor kid has Asperger's and might therefore, for a variety of reasons, look a bit younger than her age. But that's not her choice, really, is it? A person with Asperger's doesn't have to look like a 12 year old. If they lack the social skills or connections to keep up with their peers, there's always the parents to help out with some fashion advice. After all, they are the ones who are buying the clothes and they're dressing her up. And they've dressed her up in a very deliberate way, haven't they? Like this. Oh, that way, that way. <sighs> yeah, they've dressed her up like this. Pippi Longstocking to us here in the English speaking world. The Swedish pronounce it something like Pippi Longstrump, but I'll be corrected on that. There's at least one Norwegian subscriber I know about who might be able to help here. Yeah, I know it's not the same language, but they but the Norwegians do know how the Swedes talk. And this is a more modern picture of Pippi Longstocking. Got it right this time. That's the very image of Greta Thunberg, isn't it? I wonder, actually, if I should be showing that picture it has a monkey in it, doesn't it? And on previous occasions, such pictures have been construed as racist. Oh, so let's get back to Greta. Ah, uh, Greta. The way that child looks, and by the way, she is not a child. She's damn well 16 years old. And in Arabia, she'd be pregnant with her second infant to her 50 year old husband. It's better in Egypt, by the way. There she'd be pregnant only with her first. Uh, but I digress. She is 16. That's not a child. That's a stroppy teenager. She looks about 12 because she's been dressed up that way. Her hair has been plaited as if she were a nine-year-old. She's been dressed up to appeal to every Swede in existence brought up on Pippi Longstocking stories. The sassy, super strong nine-year-old heroine of what has become Swedish folklore, whose father is a pirate and then king of a South Sea island and who constantly tells adults what to do, regards them as idiots and constantly frustrates their plans to force her into conventionality. 
Oh, Greta's father, by the way, is an actor best known for playing a TV doctor. And not much else, so far as I can make out. I wonder if a Carl Jung quote is appropriate here. Well, whether it is or not, I'm going to read it out anyway. Uh, hang on. That's uh, this way, isn't it? Yeah. Children are driven unconsciously in a direction that is intended to compensate for everything that was left unfulfilled in the lives of their parents. And if you look at the filmography of Greta's father, Svante, I think, Svante Thunberg, You'll see quite a bit of unfulfilled ambition, especially if you compare him with his father, Olaf Thunberg, who has a filmography as long as your arm. I restate, I'm not having a go at poor Greta any more than I could have a go at a pawn on a chessboard. In comparing her to Pippi Longstocking, I'm not having a go at her I'm saying that she is obviously being manipulated, first by her parents and then by all the other adults around her who have seized on the opportunity to further their own political ambitions. Am I being mean and nasty? Oh, you can't get strict with a 12-year-old, can you? Especially one with an impairment like Asperger's. But... I have to keep on saying, because I know I'm going to get some flack in the comments. I'm not having a go at Greta. It's the parents. Keep that in mind. They're the ones dressing up that poor, programmed, frightened automaton who's become convinced that the world is burning and we have five minutes to put out the fire. People with such disorders as Asperger's are frightened of everything. They're frightened if a pea gets into the mashed potatoes on their plates. They're frightened of strange people. They're frightened if you change the route to school. It's a characteristic, for goodness sake. If you look at the Asperger's site, which I did, the very first thing you see are the following words. A look at Asperger's syndrome and anxiety. And then the opening paragraph, the opening paragraph reads like this. Anxiety poses one of the core challenges for people with Asperger's syndrome and other types of autism. There is a great deal of anxiety already inherent in the condition itself, which is then further intensified by social pressure and hypersensitivity to outside stimuli, another common symptom of autism. That's what Asperger's is. It's not her fault. She's not acting, probably. But when your child is anxious and fearful, the very last thing you're supposed to do is to encourage even more anxiety and fear. She should be protected, not wound up like a clockwork toy and let loose into the doubtful embraces of Marxist politicians to use to slow down the capitalist West or ambitious politicians who see her as a route to power and don't care one way or the other about which side they're on, or weak politicians who know the whole thing is ridiculous, but don't dare say anything because she's a child, which she is not. At least that's what she keeps telling us. A frightened child, and you can't criticise a frightened child. That would be abuse, wouldn't it? No, I'll tell you what abuse is. Abuse is taking a frightened child and making her even more frightened. When one of my sons insisted there was a lobster under his bed, he meant monster. And I nearly burst a blood vessel trying not to say to him, oh no, sweetie, it's not a lobster under your bed. It's a monster. <laughs> Well, I didn't do that. Anyway, he was frightened of the lobster under the bed. I didn't say to myself, 
and to him oh how terrible how terribly frightening there's a lobster there you really should be frightened by that uh, and then uh, go upstairs with armor on and uh, and net and a pot of boiling water uh, and, and all the paraphernalia of catching lobsters and every expression of terror about how it's going to click its what do you call them's claws Instead, I told him that monsters, or lobsters, are particularly susceptible to the magic invisible gun I was going to give him. I then gave him the magic invisible gun and no more lobsters, or even monsters. Or, well, if there had been lobsters, that might have been a mistake because I could have missed out on a couple of good dinners there, couldn't I? Hmm. Yeah. Oh, when someone has an irrational fear, you don't help them by telling them they're defenceless and should be even more frightened. If one of my boys had really been worried about climate change, I'd have said, study your little bippy off, darling, and become a big scientist so you can do something about the energy crisis or cleaning the seas or something. That's your armour. That's how you deal with this fear. But no, these parents just whipped up the fear and set her out on the world. So, back to Greta. What I thought of besides Pippi Longstocking was the story about Chicken Little, the one who was passing an oak tree when an acorn fell on her head which convinced her that the sky was falling and before you could say thunderclap the entire farmyard was wailing that the sky was falling. I think that's known as mass hysteria. After that there's of course the Emperor's new clothes isn't there? A lot of people could see there was some very embarrassing cheating going on but they were too cowardly to come out and admit it. And as for the Hundred Years War there was Joan of Arc, who became a sacred virgin who saw visions to lead the French army to victory and who was discarded as soon as she became politically inconvenient. And when this particular sacred virgin has served her purpose and they get bored with her, then they'll dispose of her in some way as well. I just hope her bloody awful parents are still around to catch her when she's pushed. Oh, and I've just discovered something else. Greta Thunberg's full name is Greta Tintin, or rather Tintin, Eleonora Eman Thunberg. They called their daughter Tintin. Even when she was a baby, they already had plans for that child, didn't they? Click on like, it really does help with the algorithm. Then click on subscribe and then on the bell. Sometimes you may find your subscription has lapsed without your knowledge. So keep on checking that button. Thanks for listening. Please like and subscribe. And if you wish to donate, click the subscribe star link where you can make a one-off payment or set up a regular contribution or I have a PayPal account at grannyopteryx at gmail.com. Till next time.